What happened to the Admiral Knetsov aircraft carrier? For every example of a country that succeeds in deploying a functional carrier and matching air wing, there's a counterexample. A flat top hobbled by mechanical problems, stricken by age, sidelined by bad design, or stuck with warplanes that simply don't work. Although imposing, flexible, able to sail fast and launch devastating airstrikes at long range, aircraft carriers are the ultimate expression of national power. And many of the world's best armed countries are acquiring them. Russia, China, Brazil, the UK, France, India, America. But just getting your hands on a flat top is hardly enough. But what follows are not the success stories. They are the case studies in flat top failure and object lessons for all the countries building aircraft carriers today. Hello everyone, welcome back again. Today we are about to discuss the Admiral Knetsov aircraft carrier and what happened to it. So let's get going. The Admiral Knetsov, Russia's only aircraft carrier, was launched in 1985 and joined the fleet in 1991. Since then, the 55,000 ton fossil fuel powered flat top has managed just four frontline deployments all of them to the Mediterranean, and all of them just a few months in duration. By contrast, American flat tops typically deploy for at least six months every two years. The nuclear-powered USS Enterprise, commissioned in 1962, completed 25 deployments before leaving service in 2012. One of Admiral Knetsov's major problems is its power plant. The vessel is powered by steam turbines and turbo-pressurized boilers that defense industry daily generally described as defective. Anticipating breakdowns, large ocean-going tugs accompany Admiral Knetsov whenever it deploys. Poor maintenance makes life complicated and dangerous for Admiral Knetsov's 1900 sailors. A short circuit started a fire off Turkey in 2009 that killed one seaman. Its pipes are bad. When it's this cold, water freezes everywhere, including pipes which may cause a rupture, English Russia reported. To prevent this, they just don't supply almost 60% of the cabins with water neither in winter nor in summer. The situation with latrines is just as bad. The ship has over 50 latrines, but half of them are shut down. Almost 2,000 men, 25 latrines. Training morale is so bad that in 2009, Admiral Knetsov sailors apparently botched an at-sea refueling, spilling hundreds of tons of fuel into the Irish Sea. And even when the ship functions as intended, her design limits her utility. Admiral Knetsov does not have steam catapults like American flat tops do. Instead, her Suhoi fighters launched into the air off a bow ramp. The fighters must stay light, meaning they can only carry a few air-to-air -air missiles and a partial fuel load. Their patrol endurance is measured in minutes rather than hours. English Russia summed up the Russian aircraft carrier's fundamental limitations succinctly. Actual aircraft visit this ship pretty rarely. Moscow appreciates its flat top problems and has vague plans to replace Admiral Knetsov sometime in the 2020s, by which time planners can realistically expect to have deployed the decrepit old lady maybe two or three more times. Admiral Knetsov's ill repute did not deter the Indian and Chinese governments from acquiring second-hand Russian carriers. China's Liaoning, a rebuilt sister ship of Admiral Knetsov, began limited testing in the summer of 2012, serving a mostly educational role, while a Chinese shipyard slowly built a new carrier from scratch. Outfitted with the same faulty power plant, an operation-limiting bow ramp, Liaoning is unlikely to venture far from shore or send its lightning-loaded J-15 fighters, copies of Russian Suhoi's, into serious combat. In a rare peak, Chinese state media denounced the J-15s as flopping fish. India's experience has been even worse. In 2004, New Delhi inked a $1.5 billion deal for the 1982 vintage Russian flat top Admiral Kushkov. In Russian service, the 45,000-ton vessel had carried a few helicopters and small Yakolib jump jets. The Indians paid to have the flight deck expanded and a bow ramp fitted to accommodate up to 16 MiG-29 fighters. Renamed Vic Ramita, the flat top was due to end their service in 2008, but the poorly managed Russian shipyard was overwhelmed by the scale of the refit. Calls multiplied and trials were bumped back to September 2012. And when the crew pushed the conventionally powered ship to its theoretical top speed of 32 knots, the boilers overheated. India didn't want to use asbestos as heat protection for the boilers, the fence industry daily clarified. Instead, the boiler's designer had to use fire brick ceramics, which, as we see, didn't work so well. Especially on a ship that Russia put up for sale in 1994 after a boiler room explosion. Our emphasis, more repairs, more delays, more money. 
The problems revealed during sea trials last year have been fixed. Russian Deputy Prime Minister Dmitry Rogozin vowed in late 2013, by which point Vakramita was expected to enter active service in India in the spring of 2014. Active service being a relative term. If Russia's own experience with its crappy carriers is any indication, the Indian ship will spend most of its time in port being repaired between brief forays into near waters. New Delhi is building a new carrier from scratch that should eventually complement the Russian hand-me-down. Not all bad aircraft carriers are Russian. The UK and France have both sold to poor naives decommissioned flat tops that perhaps should have been permanently retired. In 2000, the Brazilian Navy acquired the former Foch from Paris for $12 million. Commissioned into French service in 1963, the 3,000-ton non-nuclear Foch carried 40 fighters and helicopters. Unlike Russian flat tops, Foch had steam catapults, allowing her to boost severely laden planes off her deck. The Brazilians renamed her Sao Paulo and, for the first four years, busily sailed the second-hand vessel in a series of regional exercises, practicing with her upgraded A-4 fighters, sailing with the American carrier USS Ronald Reagan, and even qualifying Argentinian planes for deck operations. Sao Paulo was, and remains, Land America's only aircraft carrier. But its age began to show. Despite Brazil spending an additional $100 million on upkeep, onboard fires in 2005 and 2012 killed two sailors and left the flat top barely functioning beyond flag flying and light duties, according to Warship International Fleet Review. The Brazilian Defense Ministry admitted the ship's effectiveness is extremely limited. Today, the A-4s rarely fly. Sao Paulo's replacement is still in the planning stages. A brand new carrier to enter service sometime in the 2020s, around the same time that Russia, China, and India all hope to have new and improved, that is to say, safe and efficient, flat tops of their own. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments down below. Till then, be safe and stay well.